In this lesson, we are going over the angle relationships when you have parallel lines and they are cut by a transversal. So like here, for example, this is just making sure that we're good to go with our terminology and identifying the angle relationships. Now, we're not specifically talking about parallel lines just yet. So like notice here how this line here and this line here will eventually intersect. So this is just to identify um, and review our um, vocab in terms of the alternate interior and exterior corresponding and same side interior as well as exterior. So like looking at angles one and two. Now this is not a term that is up here. However, we talked about um, this angle, these angles in uh, the previous lesson, how they're side by side uh, creating that straight line. So these two are a linear pair. So now one and six, now one and six were also introduced in the, um, or reviewed in the previous. Notice how they're directly across from each other. So now one and six are vertical angles. Now one and three though, we're getting into something a little different. Notice how, if you were to think about it like this, we have these four angles here, and then we have these four angles here, right? Like two separate sections, two separate angles, uh, groups. Notice how one and three are in the same spot. They're in the top left. So if one and three are in the same spot, then now we are um, dealing with corresponding angles. They're in the same spot. Now three and six. So three and six here, Notice how, and again, another way of looking at our lines, that we have these four that if I were to draw are on the inside, and these four, one and five, four and eight, that are on the outside of our two lines. And in terms of the line here, we'll, we'll refer to as our transversal. They are on different sides of the transversal and um, inside of the two lines here. So this is your alternate because you're switching sides and inside, so alternate interior angles. Then four and five, so leaving this up here, notice four and five are on the outside and again on different sides of the transversal. So again, they are on different sides. So this is again, alternate. But now because they're outside of the lines, alternate exterior. Now six and seven. Notice how six and seven are now inside, but now they're on the same side of the transversal. So notice how we did not switch. So six and seven are now on the same side of the transversal and inside, so interior. Then five and eight. We'll notice five and eight are on the same side of the transversal and both are outside of the two lines. So these are same side exterior because now they are outside. And so now when we have lines that are parallel, so like line M and line L are parallel to each other. When we create with parallel lines cut by our transversal, which is line N, then the um, angles that are formed now are either congruent or supplementary, but only when you have the parallel lines here cut by the transversal. So like before, the only situation where it doesn't matter if they're parallel or not are the first two. No matter what, parallel or not, linear pairs are always supplementary. They will always add up to 180 degrees, your side by side, versus vertical angles that are across from each other. It doesn't matter, they will always be congruent. They will be equal to each other. It's what changes are the rest of these um, angle relationships. 
So angles that are congruent would be like if you notice two and use the picture, two and six. So two and six are in the same spot. They're in the same position. So these angles are corresponding. So corresponding angles are congruent to each other. Another pair would be like three and five. Notice how here we've got those acute, two acute angles. So now you have alternate because they're on different sides of the transversal interior. So alternate interior angles are congruent. Let's check alternate exterior, like one and seven. So one and seven, again, are on different sides. They are both acute. And so these are also going to be congruent. Now let's check what's left, which is our same side. So now with same side here, like four and five, we'll notice how four is an obtuse angle greater than 90 and five is an acute angle. So these are not congruent. These now angles are supplementary. So your same side interior, because again, inside of the two parallel lines. Then let's check our exterior. So same side, two and seven. Same side, exterior. Notice how again, two is obtuse and seven is acute. So same side exterior will also be supplementary. They will add up to 180 degrees. The only way that these will be congruent is if you had 90 degree angles. If the lines that were parallel and cut by the transversal were perpendicular, that's the only way that these angles would also be congruent to each other. So like for example, angle one is 140 so we're starting here at angle one. We're identifying the measure of the angles. So like angle two, well, notice how it's right next to it, creating that straight line, linear pair. So that means they add up to 180, making angle two 40 degrees. So 40 degrees because they are the linear pair. Now angle three. Now there's two things that we could state about angle three. One thing is, is that again, one and three are a linear pair. Or you could also state that angles two and three are vertical and vertical angles are congruent to each other. So angle three is also 40 degrees because you could state how it's vertical to angle one or angle two or a linear pair to angle one. So now let's get to angle four. Same thing. So now notice how angle four is vertical to angle one, making this 140 degrees or also creating that linear pair. So 140 degrees because it's vertical to angle one or a linear pair to three or even two as well. So now let's go to the measure of angle five. We'll notice five is here. Now notice what is the relation between one and five? They're corresponding, they're in the same spot and corresponding angles are congruent. So this means that angle five is also 140 degrees because it's corresponding to angle one. Now, is there another reason we could state? Absolutely. What's the relationship between three and five? Well, they are inside the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. So these two are also same side interior, which are supplementary. Notice how they add up to 180 degrees. And then there's another reason. What's the relationship between angle four and five? They're now inside, but on different sides of the transversal, alternate. And alternate interior are congruent. 
So notice that there's multiple reasons why angle five is 140 degrees. So try to identify six, seven, and eight on your own. And let's see, so angle six, you should have said is 40 degrees. Now, multiple reasons. One, three and five are alternate interior. Another, which is congruent. Two and six are corresponding, which are congruent to each other. Four and five are same side interior, which are supplementary. Five and six are a linear pair, which are supplementary. So notice how there's multiple reasons. So like angle seven is also 40 degrees because it is vertical to six or it's corresponding to three. So notice there's different reasons. And angle eight is 140 degrees, which again is vertical or the corresponding. So now looking here at example two, angle two, and now notice we are given that the two lines are parallel and angle two is 88 degrees, which is here. So the measure of angle six, well, what's their relationship? They're on the same side of the transversal and outside of the parallel line. So that means that they are same side exterior, which means they are supplementary and add up to 180 degrees. So that's why angle six here, I'm sorry, not angle, oh, I just realized that that was angle eight. Sorry, as I couldn't see that. Let's try that again. Oh, because that was for angle eight. Angle six is here, there we go, which is in the same spot as angle two, which is corresponding and corresponding angles are congruent to each other when the lines are parallel, which means angle six is 88 degrees. Then angle three, so angle three here, well, angle three is vertical to angle two, which means again, they are congruent, making angle three also 88 degrees. Now, it states that the measure of angle seven is six X minus 12. So angle seven is six X minus 12. Now we're looking for the measure of angle X. Well, first off, what is angle seven? Well, angle seven is vertical from angle six, which is 88 degrees. It is also corresponding to angle three. So 6x minus 12 is equal to 88. And now we just solve our two-step equation for x. Add 12 to both sides, 6x is equal to 100, and divide by 6 to get your decimal from 100 over 6. So just to make sure that we're good to go with identifying which pair of angles are corresponding. So like 1 and 2, nope, they're a linear pair. 1 and 7, nope, they're same side, exterior. Notice how they're on opposite, are on the same side, but outside. So 1 and 7. 4 and 8, oh, 4 and 8. Notice how they're in the same position. So let's check to make sure that C is our answer. 3 and 5, they're on the same side of the transversal inside of the parallel line. So that's why the answer here is C. And so now let's get into more of the using the relationships to solving for X. So the measure of, we're looking for the measure of ECF. So ECF. So notice we're talking about this angle here, angle ECF. Well, one thing I noticed that ECF is corresponding to the angle 70, which is CBG. So they're corresponding, which means they are congruent to each other. So that's why here, the angle of, the measure of angle ECF is also 70 degrees. Now, if we wanted to know the measure of angle DCE, which is here, which is the 5X, well, is 5X equal to 70? No, because they're a linear pair, 
which means they're supplementary. These two add up to 180 degrees. However, we could go through and solve for X, or if I know that the measure of angle ECF is 70, then DCE has to be 110 degrees. Now I could check it. 5X plus 70 is equal to 180 degrees. When you solve, subtract 70, you get 5X is equal to 110. So now dividing by 5, if I wanted to know the value of X, and X is equal to 22. So plugging in and whatnot, you should get even here, 110. Go ahead and pause the video now and try the U try on your own. And here we go. So with EDG, EDG is here, the X minus 30. So we're looking for this angle measure. Well, one thing I notice is that it is alternate exterior from CBF, which is 75 degrees. They are congruent to each other, which means they are equal to each other. Now we could go through and solve or just know that we're just looking for the measure of the angle, which is 75 degrees. Then the measure of angle, BDG. So BDG, which is here. So BDG is just X. Well, notice how they are a linear pair here. So that means they add up to 180 degrees. So that's why X or the value of X, BD, um, BDG, is 105 degrees because they have to add up to 180. So again, pause the video and do these two U-tries. So for the first U-try, we are stating that you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we have two parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Which of the following scenarios is not a possible result? So one, first off, that means if we have parallel lines that we have the congruent and supplementary angles. A pair of same side interior angles measures 65 and 115. So same side interior, those angles are gonna be supplementary, add up to 180. So do these two angles add up to 180? Yes, but we're looking for the not. So A is true, not false. Now let's take a look at B. On alternate exterior angles with a measure of 130 and 50. Alternate exterior. These are congruent with parallel. But notice the angles given were supplementary. So let's keep going and check. Supplementary angles, which are literally just adding up to 180. So these are true. Corresponding angles, these are congruent to each other, which shows congruent. So that's why the answer is B. Then here, making sure to label the FBD, so FBD is here, 7X plus 28. GFE, so GFE, which is here at 12X minus 32. We are looking for ABF, ABF. So we are looking for the measure of this angle here. Well, first off, we need to know what in the world is X, right? Well, I notice that these two angles here given to us with X are corresponding. They're in the same position, that lower right, which means they're equal to each other. 7X plus 28 is equal to 12X minus 32. Now we go through and solve for x. So I'm going to subtract and gather my variables. 28 is equal to 5x minus 32. Now we can solve our two-step. Add 32. And 5x is now equal to 60. So when you divide by 5, you should have gotten that x is equal to 12. However, again, we're looking for the measure of this angle ABF. So let's go ahead and plug back in for x, which is here. So 7 times x, or 7 times 12 plus 28, which gives you here 84 
plus 28, which means the measure of the angle is 112 degrees. So is 112 our answer? No, it's this angle here that's 112 degrees. We're looking for the side that is the linear pair, which means they are supplementary. So we need to figure out what number would add up to 180. So we can subtract that 112 from 180 to get the missing angle measure of 68 degrees. That is the final answer.